my objective here isn't just to blow smoke up Michelin's ass. I just seem to rock it. Legendary status. This is a thousand cc super naked. <laughs> it's absolutely just flip flopping through here. Welcome back to sunny Spain. Today I'm at Jerez, or Jerez, <laughs> if you're English, and we're going to be riding and testing the new range of Michelin tyres, the 2024. So we've got the new Power 6s, we've got the new Power GP2s, and we've got the new Anarchy Road. So this, this event's going to be, be split into three tests on the road, on the adventure bikes behind me, testing the Anarchies. On the road also, on the, the road bikes over there, testing the Power 6s and the GP2s on the road. And finally, this afternoon, we're going to be testing the GP6, GP2s and Power 6s on circuit at Jerez. Oh, it's a proper, proper circuit, Jerez. So I'm really quite excited about that. We've got four sessions. We've got RSV4s, we've got S1000 RRs, we've got Super Jukes, we've got R1s, we've got Fireblades, a whole host of different bikes to test. So uh, this is going to be a fantastic video and uh, my first ever tyre test. So I'm really, really quite excited. So, uh, Chopsy, grab yourself a coffee and uh, roll the intro. So here we go, we've had a little briefing about the tyres, learn all about them, all about them. So these bikes have basically got a mixture of the Power 6s and the Power GP2. So I'm going to start on the S1000R, oh, one of my favourite road bikes, and this one is fitted with the Power GP2s. So basically the ins and outs of it is, after all the waffle, is the GP2 is not quite as good in the wet as the Power 6. You get, you get a little bit less mileage out of the GP2, but you get better handling and slightly better grip. So that, that's the sort of balance. So the GP2s would be a brilliant tyre on track. You know, probably the, if you're doing a lot of track days, go GP2. If you're doing the odd track day, the Power 6 is perfect on track as well. So we're going to be using both of these tyres on the track at Jerez tomorrow. But that's the sort of balance of it. You know, there's different compounds, there's different silica amounts, there's different, the construction's different. The GP2 has more of the slick area here. Uh, and the Power 6 has, you know, more of a treaded area towards the edge because these offer better grip in the wet, really. Um, so that's sort of what, what I've made of it after all the, the waffle is done. So we're going we're gonna to do a lot of swapping between bikes as part of this ride. So I'll start on the, I'll start on the single R when we've got Hornet. Oh, there's another, um, there we go. So there's another S1000R with a different tyre. So that's what I need to do, swap on the other S1000R with the Power 6. See if I can notice any difference in the handling. It's really subjective tyre testing, isn't it? You know, when you're testing between the same brand of tyres, you know, you really want to bring some Bridgestones in, you want to bring some Metzes in, you want to bring some Pirellis in to try and feel the difference. A tyre, to some degree, is a tyre, isn't it? You know, it's, it's, it's very subtle, I think, that the differences. But, but let's see, let's see if I can notice the differences between these two tyres. I guess that's the, that's the acid test, isn't it? And we are off. Oh, blimey. God, that feels... Wow, that feels incredibly fast turning. That almost took me by surprise. That, that is incredibly agile. I mean, of course, they're all brand new. I don't know if they're absolutely brand new, these tyres, or whether they've been bedded in. That's a big question I should have asked. I am partial to a bit of a Michelin tyre, I have to say. I've got the Power 5s on my H2. So I've already been running the Power 5s, I've done about 2,000 miles on the, uh, the Power 5s. Really rate them, quite gritty. And I've got the cups. <laughs> that feels quick. I've got the Power Cups on my uh, 690 SMCR. My objective here isn't just to blow smoke up Michelin's ass. 
because they've invited me on this launch. Absolutely not. What you're going to hear from me is my honest feeling. And if I can't feel any difference between these tyres, you know, I'm going to let you know. I'm not here to bang on about how good Michelin tyres are and, you know, it's, it's all going to be... What are these roads we're going on? We're not on the, uh, the adventure ride, are we? But I'm going to tell you as it is, absolutely as it is, and it's really surprised me at how these just flop into the bends. It could be the bike, of course. I mean, this is a really agile machine. But I'm liking the look of the pace so far. I've got a bug right on my helmet, right in my field of view. Another important... Oh, oh my God, that's just another massive bug right across the helmet. Right across my visor. Oh, I can't see shit. Oh, that's horrible. Oh, that's, that's, that's not nice. God, these feel so agile. You almost feel they've got to be a little bit careful with them. Because it's just like super, super quick on the turning. And I'm a little bit worried whether they're bedded in or not, or whether they're bone, bone fresh out the moulds. Hopefully not. Oh, they can't see. Look at the sticky bug there. Oh, this is a question if you even need the end, this. Brakes are brilliant. Quick shift it isn't very good. On this one anyway. It just flips over the flip-flop. Oh, bug splats. I wish I could see out of both eyes. <laughs> this seems a rocket. I must admit the roads are a little bit rough around here. We're um Peref is just sort of an hour outside of Seville, down towards the coast. And uh, I flew in this morning. My alarm went off a quarter to four, so I've been up. I've had about two hours sleep last night. And the roads down to the down to Jerez or Peref, pretty pretty bad. <laughs> I thought all the Spanish roads were absolutely billion smooth tarmac, but uh, yeah, actually it's not the case. how much I love this. Sort of overshadowed by the M this bike isn't it but it's still bloody brilliant. Well I'm not getting too many stones being thrown up anyway with these tyres. So that's quite good. Oh, I wish I could see. <laughs> I wish I could see in both eyes. So so far the agility is what I'm really noticing with these tyres. I mean and they're gripping, I'm getting really good feedback from the road. Oh, GSXR 125. Hello, good sir. Really good uh, feel from the tarmac, good feedback from the tarmac. But it, it's the way it changes direction on these and the way it just falls into a corner. Like I say, I'm, I'm interested to try it on the Power 6s to see if it feels a bit less agile, a little bit less agile. Is it the bike or is it the tyres? I don't remember the S1000R being as agile as this. Whoa! I mean, tyres, uh, they're round, they're black. I didn't crash. <laughs> you know, what, what can you say about them, really? <laughs> it's, uh, it's one of those, isn't it? I mean, they, it looks like they've done a lot of work on these tyres. I mean, they're saying in the presentation we've just had, they're saying there's a 10% improvement in grip over the old GPs. So 10% more grip, very similar longevity, 1% you know, less on the longevity. Basically, they changed the carcasses of the tyres. They've actually got something like 500, 500 metres of Kevlar in their tyre construction now, in both the tyres, the Power 6s and the GP2s. 500 metres of Kevlar per tyre. Plus a load of, uh, you know, steel braiding and all that as well, which goes into tyre construction. Yeah, inc inc incredible, that. You want the tyres are so expensive. Go on, Jake, prop it up, Jake, prop it up. You know you want to. Three. I knew he wanted to. He's got to work out how to turn off the traction control, though. Oh, 
Oh, look at the state of this road. Oh, my word. It's like I'm in the UK again. Oh, I wish I could see. Oh, I don't like riding like this, and I don't know where I'm going. The road surface is really terrible, and I can only see out of one eye. <laughs> it's not ideal. Welcome to a bike launch, tyre launch, slash any sort of launch. Okay, so that was the uh, Power 2s. I've cleaned my visor, I've cleaned my GoPro. You had a bug sat on the GoPro as well, so I don't know how much of that is usable. But uh, yeah, the Cup 2s, sorry, the Cup 2s, Power GP2s. Very impressive, the way it sort of falls in. The most impressive thing about it, obviously you've got grip, or seem to have grip. Terrible surface, terrible roads. We've just come up to the mountains now, look at the view. It's gonna get, it's gonna get spicy now. So, but very impressive how agile those tires are. Just, it's incredible. So let's have a go on the power sixes now and see if we can notice the difference. Being able to see will make a big difference. Let's go. Power sixes. I have tried the power sixes on the uh, 1390 Super Duke and the 390 Super Duke had the power sixes on. We had the power sixes at Almeria, and that's a circuit where you're high speed on the side of the tyre, and some of them were getting a bit chewed up on the launch. I mean, we were doing back to back sessions. You know, on the Super Duke, 145 Newton metres, sat on the side of the tyre. And uh, yeah, they were getting chewed up pretty fast at Almeria, but it's a really abrasive surface as well. So I'd be interested to see the difference uh, compared to Jerez. But I think that was uh, more to do with the circuit than the actual tyres. But how does it feel? Actually, it doesn't fall in as, as much. I don't know if they've got a, they're both the same size tyres. It's not like I've got a, a 55 or something on, on the GP2s. They're both the same profiles, but it's definitely a little bit less agile. It was almost too agile. When I first jumped on that one, it was almost too agile. This definitely takes a little bit more effort to change direction. That's really quite interesting. I mean, I guess, you know, the grip on a road ride, you're not going to hopefully find the limits of the grip on a road ride anyway. Uh, plenty of... It's not spinning up or anything, obviously. So the Power 6s are more your uh, tyre for, you know, better wet weather performance, better longevity. There's less of the tyre as a slick, because the very edges of the tyre on the heat are these, a part of them is slick, there's no tread, you know. So all of these tyres are dual compounds, so all of these tyres have that dual compound approach, but with the, with the G, with the Power 6, there's less of the super sticky material on the edge of the tyre, and it's, there's more of the harder material in like the middle of the tyre. So the GP2s have got more of the sticky stuff on the outside, let's call it that. My helmet was so mucky, I just needed a slice of bread. And I could have made myself a honey sandwich. Uh, it still feels pretty agile, even on the Power 6s. I'm wondering whether it was in my head now. But extra agility. I mean, the feel from the... T it feels very similar. You know, I'd be lying if I could tell you, oh yeah, I, I can notice there's less grip with the Power 6. You know, I, I guess really in the real world, you're probably better off getting the Power 6 and having, you know, that extra longevity and better performance in the wet. Look at this, this is quite nice, isn't it? This is very pretty, actually. This, this is like a, a pretty little town we're coming into here. Where are we? Oh, this is Jerez. So we're on our way basically back to the track now. This is actually Jerez now. Or Jerez. Same thing. Sometimes I'll call it Jerez, other times I'll call it Jerez. Look at that, that's, that's gorgeous there, isn't it? Look at that, that is, that is gorgeous. Jake the Garden Snake. I'm riding with Jake. I'm riding with the legend, which is Jake the Garden Snake. Fist pump, dude. Bring it in. Boom. <laughs> Legendary status. So what are my takeaways from this little ride? Don't know, really. <laughs> I don't know. First of all, 
I'd forgotten how much I love the S1000R. It is absolutely a superb, superb motorcycle. And now I'm wondering whether really you even need the M after borrowing this. It's still absolutely rapid, absolutely brakes are amazing, it changes direction incredibly, it's got so much grunt at the bottom end. It, yeah, it's, it's, it's a brilliant bike. Tyres, I, th I think I had some extra bit of agility with the GP2s, but I could do a swapping back again actually just to confirm that, if I'm honest. But these, these power sixes still feel absolutely fantastic. I'd be well happy with either tyre on any one of my bikes. One thing they have done is they've increased the sizes available now. So with the GP2s, you never used to be able to get a 160 rear. They've now introduced a 160, which is really handy because I need a new tyres on my 690 SMCR and that takes a 160. <laughs> so what I'll probably do, I'll try and see if I can uh, get hold of a set to actually run in the UK and I can let you know then you know, what the longevity is like so what we're going to do swap back onto the bike with the GP2s see if it's all in my head where it feels more agile I'm sure it isn't but just to confirm and then uh, maybe swap back over again but I think I'll just stick with the S1000R just because he just test just to test the tyres even though I wouldn't mind to go on the Monster Maybe we'll go on the Monster if we can. Another change they've done is they now have an asymmetrical tread pattern on the new tyres. If you think the old Michelin's always had a symmetrical tread pattern with like the little slot slits, didn't they? But they've all, both these new range of tyres have now gone asymmetrical. And that's just for, there's no, there's no performance benefits with doing that. Apparently that's just for the looks really and what the market wants. So they say, <laughs> you done it, you got it. <laughs> Traction control off. The, the other one was in Spanish, so I couldn't, I was trying, I didn't know how to turn it off. That's it yeah, now, now we're going to see some power, fun. Now we're gonna go to, this is, this is, this should just be called normal. Back on the Hockenheim, equipped with the GP2, so just want to see if that initial agility feeling is in my head or if it's real. <laughs> initial turn in let's call it i mean whether that's because these tires are newer and they're and they're more rounded i don't think so i think they're just a little bit more round maybe the profile of them is just a little bit more rounded it definitely turns in quicker on the gp2s definitely it's not just in my head this bike feels more agile that initial turn in is, I think it's the front tyre. It's so nice, it just falls into the bend up front. Just literally tips in with minimal, minimal effort. And I think this bike is naturally very agile. But that tyre, <laughs> it really complements it. I mean, it, it's almost, it almost makes it over over agile if there is such a such a thing you end up sort of turning a bit too much and i guess it's just a case of getting used to it yeah there's loads of grip both these tires are, are definitely impressive but all you know all sports tires are impressive these days they're all good you know what would be really refreshing wouldn't it is for them to bring some of the competition's tyres are on to really, to really test these that tyres out, you know. Bring a couple of Pirellis, bring a couple of Dunlops into the mix and let's see how they compare to those. I guess that's a test we may have to do ourselves because that is just never going to happen on a tyre launch, unfortunately. Yeah, this is great. This is more like it. This is why I... I came to Spain. Quiet, twisty road. Yeah, that's not so good, look. That's the tyres all wet now. And this is a 1000cc super naked. <laughs> it's 
absolutely just flip flopping through here. Yeehaw! It's making this bike really dance on the nose. It's a great bike this, this is a great bike. Oh. Maybe we need to do a test between an S1000R and an M1000R. See if it's worth the extra money on the M. There ain't nothing wrong with this. Nothing wrong with this. Suspension's actually a bit more comfortable. The M suspension's really hard as well. This could actually make a lot more sense, you know. It's a good rider, this fellow on the... <laughs> this fellow on the Sornet. Very smooth. I think he's disconnected his brake light. Oh no, it's still connected. This is brilliant. I'm loving this. Sort of trail braking as well. You've got a trail brake <laughs> on this. I'm trail braking quite a lot. Loads of feel as well. Plenty of trail braking. That's good fun. <laughs> That's good. That's good, yeah. I like that. Little tight. Very good. There's 11 of us. So there's a group of six and a group of five and we're going out second. So I think, I think we're going to be in the group of five people. So there's five of us on track at Arrest. We've got five people, we've got the track to ourselves. So the idea is a bit like what we did on the road ride. So we start off on the GP6s, which is what I've got on this double R, which I'm going to be taking out first. And then uh, we do that for two sessions and then we go on to one of the double Rs or another bike with the GP2s on. So that's the plan. Take it wide, hello right there. Ha 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 ha. Oh yeah. 